Water temperature sensor in a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 1.9 PD ATD engine 99 to 2007. If you have a coolant light come on your dashboard after starting the engine, mine comes on after about 20 seconds and this can signal a number of possible faults. This video covers the actual water temperature sender unit which is located down on the left hand side of the engine nearest the airbox. The reason why I'm changing this out is because from time to time when the car starts from cold or is warm the dashboard temperature dial stays or drops to zero seemingly for no reason and then resumes a while later. It could be related to the wiring connection which I'll check but as these sensors cost very little just changing it out for a new one may fix the issue. I will actually test the sensors out of the car later on in the video just to see if there's a difference between the old and new one but as my issue is intermittent any test may or may not show any significant faults so fitting a new one would be the best option. The dashboard warning light could of course be related to something else such as low coolant level so be sure to check that out first. When the engine is cold the coolant level should be on the minimum line not above or below mine's just slightly below so I'll have to top that up slightly and for these engines you want to be using G12 pink coolant mixed at a ratio of 50-50 coolant to water distilled or deionized water if you prefer another common issue with these older cars is over time the bottle level sensor can fail you can check the connection it just pulls off with two clips there's one underneath that seems all okay what happens is deposits and corrosion build up on the contacts within the tank giving false readings and flash up the dashboard light. These contacts are difficult to reach and clean so a replacement is preferred and I'll cover that in an upcoming video so be sure to check that one out. On this particular engine the sensor is below the expansion tank and radiator fill and mounted horizontally facing backwards to the rear of the car so some coolant will leak out when you remove the sensor. Even if you empty the expansion tank there will still be coolant left in the system. You could drain the system from the bottom of the radiator valve but that would entail taking the engine under tray off and I don't want to do that as these can be changed out very quickly with only a little loss of coolant that will be caught by the under tray anyway so no need for rags underneath the car. Here's the sensor connection and housing this is a two wire sensor, some later models may have more wires but be sure to purchase the right one for your car. It's best not to take the electrical connection off before you put the new one in as to protect it from coolant and it makes it a little bit easier to take off afterwards. The sensor is held in place by a U shaped retaining clip which simply pulls out. You can do this with your fingers but you can also get a small flat bladed screwdriver on it if it's a bit stiff. Here's the new sensor which is a Chinese cheapie, same as the last one I fitted 10 years ago. Do this when the engine is cold only and wear gloves and eyewear. I'd recommend a, a new OEM one though if you want to be sure to eliminate this sensor if you have other issues. Make sure the new sensor comes with a new rubber sealing ring and this one's got a clip as well which is made of plastic. I think the original ones are a metal. Push the new sealing ring onto the sensor, make sure it's seated all the way around. Then remove the clip by pulling downwards and the sensor should stay in place. If it doesn't, quickly put the new one back in but usually they stay put until you have loosened them and you can easily loosen them by just rolling around a little bit until you see coolant coming out then get your new sensor aligned for a quick change take the old one out and bung the new one in as I was more concerned in not losing any coolant I initially didn't notice that I'd put the new sensor on top of the old ceiling ring that was still in the housing.
of course I couldn't get the U clip back on. And then realised what I'd done when I looked at the old sensor. So another quick leaky exchange and then the new sensor went in and seated much better. And of course the little clip, the U-clip just slots back in, into place, securing it. Take the connection off the old sensor. Typical Volkswagen Audi clip, you just pull up with your finger or a little screwdriver and with a bit of fiddling should come off. Give it a little bit of a shake and fit it onto the new sensor. Making sure it clips into place. You should hear an audible clip. And the job's done. Well, almost. I will, of course, have to fill up the expansion tank up to the correct level again. And you might have noticed that I've got a really good camera angle on this one. That's because I actually removed the airbox so I could get a better camera angle. But it does give you lots of room to do this job. Although you don't need to do actually, it's quite easy to do it just down the little gap that at the side of the engine. Now on to testing of the sensors. This is the new one. I'll set me meter to ohms, resistance, check my leads. And as this is only a, a two pin sensor, it doesn't matter which pin that you put it on. I'm looking for an increase in resistance in the cold water on the left. And I get about 2,300 ohms, 2.3 kilo ohms. And in the hot water, uh, it goes down and it's keeping on going down which is what you would expect to happen and it's gone down to about just less than 600 ohms half a kilo ohm and now the old sensor with the same conditions and in the cold water the resistance was a bit higher and went up to about 3,300 ohms. But when I put it in the hot water, it was difficult to get a reading. Sometimes it did give a plausible reading and then seemed to go off or increase its resistance and then back to an open circuit. It was difficult to get any consistency, although some of that could be down to the way I put the probes onto the connections. But having tried for a quite a long time, it didn't seem to improve, so all I can conclude is that it may have been a bit faulty. Certainly when it was uh, registering oh. an open circuit now and again. And as the system is cold, you don't have to worry about any expanding air pressure from the expansion tank. When you take the cap off, I've got some pre-prepared coolant, which is G12, 50-50. Just bring that up to the minimum mark, a little bit at a time, and the job's done. Hopefully that'll solve my issue, but nevertheless, I hope this video helped you out, guys. Feel free to ask a question in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Oh, and I'm now on Twitter, so be sure to check that one out. And I'll see you on the next video.